This is Eric Michael Lloyd, master's student in clinical psychology, neuropsychology concentration. Today I want to read an article by Mark A. Brackett, research article uh, by Mark A. Brackett, Michelle Bertoli, Nicole Albertson, Elise Basseron, Ruth Castillo, and Peter Salave. This one is called Emotional Intelligence, Reconceptualizing the Link, Reconceptualizing Cognition, Emotion Link. Historically, cognition and emotion were viewed as oppositional processes. Lloyd, 1979. An idea infused into Western worldview by the Stoics of ancient Greece, Lyons, 1999. As recently as the middle of the 20th century, scholars warned that emotions were mentally destabilizing forces, Young, 1943, that prevented from logical reasoning, Lefford, 1946. Formalizing the ways in which emotion and thought could work in concert was no small feat. It required overcoming centuries of collective wariness toward the passions. Beginning in the late 1970s, a conceptualization of emotion and cognition as interactive forces began to take shape. Increasing frustration with the inability of IQ to explain differences among individuals led to the development of elasticized theories of intelligence, including Gardner's multiple Intelligence Theory, 1983, 1999, and Sternberg's Triarchic Theory of Intelligence, 1985. At the same time, investigators began to examine the impact of moods and emotions on thought processes. Eisen, Stalker, Clark, Clark and Karp, 1978, for instance, proposed that the existence of a cognitive loop between mood and judgment the existence, <clears throat> proposed the existence of a cognitive loop between mood and judgment. It was in this context that the concept of emotional intelligence, EI, emerged. EI was first introduced to the scientific literature in 1990 by psychologists Salovey and Mayer. They defined EI as the ability to monitor one's own and others' feelings and emotions, to discriminate among them, and to use this information to guide one's thinking and actions. Page 189. They proposed that emotions facilitate cognitive processes and demonstrated empirically how aspects of EI might be measured as a mental ability. In the wake of Salovey and Mayer's initial conceptualization of EI, myriad interpersonalizations of, of the construct were proposed in both academic and popular literatures. The year 1995 saw the popularization of EI with the international success of Goldman's book, Emotional Intelligence, Why It Can Matter More Than IQ. This book quickly captured the interests of the media and the general public and resonated powerfully in education and management circles. Mayer, Salave, and Caruso, 2000. Goldman's 1995-1998 discourse often criticized for embracing claims not rooted in research. Littlebaum, Lin, Littlebaum 2009, extended EI well beyond its initial definition. Goldman described EI as an array of traits and dispositions such as self-confidence, optimism, adaptability, and achievement motivation that could account for significant aspects of work performance and success in life. Today, the field of EI is replete with varying definitions, claims, and measurement tools. Many scholars lament that comp Conflicting inter interpretations have engendered confusion and controversy 
with regard to what exactly EI is and is not, and what it cannot predict. Doss and Askan Askanaski, 2003, Mayer, Salovey, and Caruso, 2008, Zeidner, Roberts, and Matthews, 2004. In this chapter, we briefly outline the definitional and measurement issues that have arisen around different, pop, different conceptions of EI, and then explore the applications of EI in theory and in practice, in the workplace and educational settings. Models and measurement of EI, emotional intelligence. Four primary models, models of EI exist today. Chernus, 2010, the mayor Salovey ability or four branch model, Mayer and Salovey 1997, Salovey and Mayer 1990, the bar on model of emotional social intelligence, bar on 2006, the Boyatzis Goldman model, Boyatzis and Sala 2004, and the trait EI model, Petrides and Fernham 2003. These models are characterized into two scientific approaches, ability models and mixed models, Mayer, Caruso, and Salovey 2000. Opponents of ability models have traditionally supported the use of performance measures to assess EI, whereas advocates of mixed models have preferred self-report or multi-rater assessment models. The models and their associated approaches to measurement are described briefly below. For a more thorough discussion of EI models and measures, including psychometrics, please see Mayer, Roberts, Roberts and Barsay, 2008. The four branch ability model and performance assessments. Mayer and Salovey's model of EI conceives of the construct as a set of four mental abilities also referred to as branches. Perception of emotion, use of emotion to facilitate thought, understanding of emotion, and management of emotion. These four abilities are arranged hier hierarchically with perception of emotion at the base of the model and management of emotion at the top. Here, we give an overview of the four abilities. Perception of emotion. This branch of EI refers to the accuracy with which individuals can identify emotions in themselves and others through facial expressions, tone of voice, and body language, as well as in abstract objects such as words of art. <clears throat> Works of art. Those skilled in the perception of emotion are able to express emotion appropriately and to articulate emotional needs adaptively. They also are able to determine the authenticity of the emotions expressed by others. Perception of emotion is the foundational skill of the four branch model of EI. Use of emotion to facilitate thinking. The ability to use emotion to enhance cognitive activities and to guide attention to salient environmental cues falls under the second branch. People who are skilled in using emotions to facilitate thought understand that certain emotions are relevant to specific tasks or goals. Thus, they may generate moods to support certain types of thinking or to communicate more effectively with others. Understanding emotion. The third branch of EI involves correctly labeling emotions experienced by oneself and others, and understanding how emotions differ from one another. Understanding emotion also involves an awareness of the causes and trajectories of different emotions. For example, sadness results from a loss. Unattended irritation may escalate into anger and then fury. People who are skilled in understanding emotion also are aware of how multiple emotions can blend to produce another. 
For instance, anger and disgust combine to form contempt. Research has shown that being able to label discrete negative emotions correctly can lead to the selection of effective emotion management strategies. Fieldman, Barrett, Gross, Christensen, Christensen and Ben Venito, 2001. Management of emotion. The fourth branch of EI describes more complex emotional processes. Individuals skilled in emotion management are able to remain open to both pleasant and unpleasant emotions. They are also able to recognize the value of feeling certain emotions in specific situations and to understand which short and long-term strategies work best for enhancing or reducing particular emotions. See Gross, 1998. Emotion regulation efforts benefit from developed skills on the other three branches of EI. The authors of the ability model have illustrated that EI meets the criteria for a standard intelligence in that it can be operationalized, operationalized as a set of abilities that one are interconnected or intercorrelated, two relate to extant intelligences, three develop with age and experience. Mayor Caruso and Salovey, 1999. Mayor Salovey Caruso and uh, Saturnarinos. 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 Saturnarinos, 2003. As such, the authors assert that EI is a construct best measured by performance assessments, requiring respondents to solve emotion related problems that have correct answers, such as the Mayor Salove Caruso Emotional Intelligence Test, MSCEIT. The MSCEIT is a 141-item test comprised of a total of eight tasks. Each of the four emotion abilities is measured with two tasks. Unlike self-report measures of EI, the MSCEIT does not ask respondents to rate their emotion skills, rather, the test asks them to demonstrate these skills. For example, emotion management is assessed by the test taker's ability to identify the effectiveness of various emotion management strategies to achieve a specified interpersonal goal in a given situation. Reducing an unpleasant emotion, for example. Respondents read a short, emotionally charged vignette and then evaluated the effectiveness of four different courses of action to cope with emotions in the story. A comprehensive review of the MSCEIT and other performance assessment tools is available elsewhere. See Rivers, Brackett, Salovey, and Mayer, 2007. That's where I'll just leave off for now, and then I'll read the um, rest of this article. Probably in four sections. Thank you.